Tracy. Hey, are we ready for roll call? Yes. All right, um, bear with me. I'm going to do the best I can tonight. <clears throat> Director Balboni. Here. Director Christensen. Here. Director LaHue. Here. President Jaffe. Here. And uh, Vice President Lather is absent tonight, correct? There are no public hearings. Do any board member just want to remove items from the consent agenda or an item? Um, yes, if I could remove 4.5, there's just several things I wanted information on. Okay, anybody else? Anything else? Motion to approve. Is there a public comment on the consent? Oh, public comment, sure. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> May we watch? Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Becky Steinbrenner, um, on, I, I have some questions, too, about 4.5, but I'll wait until the board reviews that at the end of the meeting. Item 4.9, um, reviewing the annual disclosure reimbursements of more than $100. I, am, I just want to say that I'm happy that the uh, district pays to train your board members. I think that's excellent. What I would like to see is a written report from each board member that goes to these conferences as to what you have learned and how that will benefit the ratepayers in the district. I know I've heard you say, you know, just general passing comments during board meetings about your attendance at these meetings, but um, I think it would be a, a good step toward transparency with the ratepayers and the public, if there were something in writing as to what what was the actual benefit of of the board members going to these um, meetings, thank you. All right, and I'll move approval of the uh, consent agenda minus four point five. I'll second. Lily Hu and Balboni. Okay. All in, all in favor. Aye. Aye. All opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay, so oral and written communications. So this is an opportunity for mem members of the public to speak on any item of interest that's not on the agenda. Thank you, Becky Steinbrunner. Um, I was glad to see in the written correspondence for your agenda packet today that my um, concern about the traffic collision at Chanticleer Avenue and SoCal Avenue Frontage Road last week at the Pier Water SoCal project entrance was included. Um, I happened upon that. But I have written your board before about my concerns at this intersection related to the increased traffic, both the um, perhaps school buses, but certainly private vehicles coming and going from the main entrance of the Pure Water SoCal Advanced Treatment Plant, but also, and of greater concern to me, is the large supply trucks full of chemicals that will be coming and going from there. I know that um, liquid oxygen will be coming there. I know there are other hazardous chemicals that will be coming there. That's a very difficult intersection. It is unprotected. So there's, there's no light controlling traffic in any direction. And now with the Chanticleer pedestrian bicycle overcrossing, that will add another element of um, use at that intersection. I see people zooming on these electric bicycles and I can just envision a kid zooming down and out onto the roadway there when someone, a truck or something from the district's treatment plant is making a turn one way or the other. I have written your board before about this because I've witnessed during the construction of the plant that when large trucks come and go, there has to be, and, and the contractor has been very good about placing uh, traffic control there while those large vehicles are entering and exiting. 
But what's going to happen when the construction is done? I'm, I hope that uh, your district will evaluate this traffic hazard and work cooperatively with the Santa Cruz County Public Works Department to see about getting a light of some kind there, some kind of traffic control that will um, mitigate the impacts of the increased traffic that the Pure Water SoCal Project Treatment Plant will bring. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. Uh, there's nobody else in the public, so no other public comments. Any directors want to? Anything? I'll just say one thing. I, um, I think, Tom, you brought this up before. Um, just our intent with having the screening for Pure Water SoCal to look good to the public has not worked. And it, it's in, incredibly apparent since the overpass has beautiful um, sea life that's very visible, and people have commented to me about that. So I'm hoping in, in the future that we'll um, upgrade what we have there so that it, that it likewise is very beautiful in the public. Thank you. And President Jaffe, I think I just want to make sure that it's clear to, to everybody. Um, yes, that was unfortunate that that traffic accident occurred at that intersection. And I just don't want it to be mischaracterized or misinterpreted that that was associated with the Pure Water SoCal project. It, it was not. And your point is taken um, related to the screenings. Thank you. I'm glad you said it because I noticed it when I got back and saw how great it looked on the overpass. I'm like, it looks well, great. Yeah. where's the other one? I can't see. I, it's minor, I'm sure it can be I know, fixed. But it's part of the whole. Yeah. We've seen. If for something, we should get it too. We've seen comments, you know, on social media um, in favor and also some criticism related to the overpass. So I think um, there's. You know, when you put something out there, I think that there's always an opinion. Um, sure. And the, the jurisdiction of the traffic there is counties, counties and their regional transportation commission. I think that's probably the authority to do that. I don't think uh, this is part of Pure Water SoCal, part of their project. One other comment and is that cities that are using water, read this in the Chronicle, and I think Ron has talked about it before, um, and whose um, water use is high are going to have to decrease their water use. That's not going to affect us, as I understand it, because our, our water use is already very low per capita, and our customers do a great job. That's correct. Thank you. Okay, that there's no reports. That brings us to 7.1. Um, Pre oh, sorry. President Jaffe, I believe okay. that uh, Josh may want to make a presentation. Um, we were speaking to him earlier today okay. during the reports. Stand corrected. Yeah. Apologies, I just had a very brief um, uh, report. I, I just wanted to make sure the board saw that the California Supreme Court is going to be removed here. Oh, wait. wait, I can't. It's breaking up. Hold on. We can't hear you. It sounds good. The California Supreme Court. I just don't like that part. <laughs> you want to try it again, Josh? Sure. Yeah, apologies. Um, I just wanted to briefly let the board know, and, and you, you may have seen it in the, um, in the media, uh, the California Supreme Court recently removed um, the so-called fair protection initiative on the ballot um, in the install before the voters in November. It had challenged by um, uh, the governor, members of the legislature, and others as unconstitutional um, due to some unique um, procedural uh, rules that apply to these situations. Especially the Supreme Court. Josh, you're breaking up still. The court ruled that 
prejudice on the scope of the um, of voters to approve and preemptively removed it from the ballot. Um, this is a big win for both state and local agencies. Um, the, the, the initiative would have substantially um, limited our ability to raise revenues. Impacts were different than on a different type of agency. For us, the most immediate impact would have been a change in the standard of review when considering water rates. Currently, those have to be based on our reasonable costs. The initiative proposed that those based on the low cost um, was somewhat ambiguous in the text of the initiative and likely would have led to substantial litigation to figure out what that meant. Um, but the good news and the takeaway is that the court preemptively removed that from the ballot. Um, so it's no longer um, before us as an issue. Happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. We think we got the gist of it. <laughs> what was the ballot initiative, what was the number on that one? That's for you, Josh. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Director, I won't forget. I can, um, I can confirm that and I can send the board. Okay, note. thanks. What was it? He has to look it up. You have to look it up. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. But it's no longer on the ballot. Right. Okay. 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 Um, is there any? So that, that takes care of the reports. Tracy, is there supposed to be something live on this? It just doesn't have anything on the screen. Okay. Okay. All right, well, that brings us to administrative business. There are no conditional or unconditional will serves. And 7.2 is to consider approval of incoming general manager employee agreement. Yes, and I'll take this and Josh, uh, please feel free to jump in if you like. So as the board remembers back on March 19th of this year, you appointed uh, Ms. Schumacher to succeed myself as general manager starting October 1st of 2024. And uh, tonight before you is the employee agreement, which is the attachment. So I'd be glad to answer any questions, but I think it's, um, you know, it's all in the uh, agreement document. Okay. Um, any public comment on this? No. Any questions? We, we did discuss this and reviewed it. Right. I said we, we did uh, have discussed this and we've reviewed it thoroughly over what? Quite a, quite a, quite a while. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, then I'll move approval. I'll move. So second? Second. I'll second. I mean. Okay. So LaHue and Christensen. And uh, let's see, does this require a roll call? No, I do not believe it does. Is that correct, Josh? That's correct. A voice vote is okay. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Passes unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to the remaining months we have with Ron Duncan. And, um, definitely going through a, a mentoring and a transition plan right now. Um, and then I will be ready and excited for October to come. So thank you. All right. And look forward to, to uh, many years with you as general manager. Okay. So that brings us to 7.3. Consider approval of ver uh, various scopes of work for continued professional consulting services related to the Pure Water SoCal program. That's my item. I'm going to try to do something with this technology. I did something so that I pinned the speakers, and now I can't get back to the, um, the packet, so hold on. I just want to make sure in case the Zoom is
that work? This is our, our first meeting without Emma and Mackenzie. So <laughs> Tracy and I are are working through the the and stumbling a little bit, but I think we've got it. So does it look okay, T? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we need all the help we can get. So item seven point three is uh something that you've seen before, which is um in years past, at the beginning of the fiscal year, we bring a couple of the contracts that are annually based or professional services that uh, require kind of a review of the status of the contract, what work is ahead, what needs to be budgeted, and then obviously these are ongoing contracts that need board approval for the extension of work as well as the budget amounts. <clears throat> for Pure Water Soquel for this upcoming fiscal year, we're presenting four different contracts for consideration. We've got Hanson Bridget, who provides um, legal, uh, legal services for our construction activities on Pure Water Soquel. We also have um, an extension of contract for Brown and Caldwell. Brown and Caldwell has been providing owner advisor services, construction management, startup and commissioning, um, agreements and also some contracts that we have related to um, the project. We also have Pacific Crest Engineering. Um, Pacific Crest provides geotechnical and field services for uh, work that we're doing. Most, most of their work and effort is on the Pure Water Soquel conveyance part of the project. And then we have Silvera Consulting. Um, this firm provides labor compliance activities and oversight for us, and um, they provide the labor compliance on all aspects of the construction, so that's the treatment, the pipeline, and also the seawater intrusion prevention wells. Um, all of the proposed scopes of work are attached uh, to the staff memo, and we did include a table related to um, what type of work it was, and the primary um, tasks and the budget. Again, as professional services contracts, these are for a not to exceed. So I think that's just important to note. This is what we've estimated to be. We are very mindful. Uh, we've talked a lot to um, the, the teams related to really working with us to kind of provide some oversight and check-ins along the way. Part of the professional services is to be adaptable based upon the construction schedule. So um, that, is, that is one of the drivers related to that. <clears throat> um, I think, um, you know, one of the things we do like to note is that we had identified that the project was going out. Startup and commissioning is happening this year. The project is to come online at the end of this year or early next year. Um, a little bit is dependent on the startup activities and also with having DDW come out and certify the project um, and, and ensure that we're meeting the uh, performance goals. Um, and so one of the things, you know, obviously we've been working on the budget. It was included in the fiscal year budget that was presented to the board at the June meeting. And then we'd also just, again, like to reiterate that um, the project is being funded from grants and low interest loans. So. It's always an, an important thing to know. <clears throat> but really, I think um, at this time, I, I've kind of given an overview and a summary. So if you have specific questions, either Taj or myself are here. OK. Any public comment on this item first? Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. What I'm not seeing in this list of consultants is anyone that is going to be handling the mitigation, monitoring, and reporting plan for the project. And I don't know if that's a, an oversight or if someone is. And they're, they're, if, I, I'd like some answer on that. Um, it has been ESA associates doing this work, but I don't see them listed. And I'm also kind of happy to see um, Capital Edge, the lobbying group in Washington, D.C., not included. But how does that affect possible funding 
uh, to help with offsetting the costs of this project. And my final question is, um, why isn't Mr. Mumper, the general manager associated in charge of, as it's been said, all things Pure Water SoCal, why isn't he presenting this instead of you, Ms. Ms. Schumacher? Thank you. Thank you, Becky. Are there any questions from directors? I could respond related to some of the other services that aren't um, being presented tonight, if yeah, you'd like yeah. that. Thank sure. You. So environmental uh, services and permitting compliance, which is done by ESA, they do have a contract and we still have funding available on their purchase order, so they are not being presented today. Yes, I assume that. <clears throat> okay. Any questions from directors? All right. What's your pleasure? Move to approve. Moved. Second. Second. And again, I think this is a voice vote. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, 7.4, consider approval of annual statement of investment pol policy fiscal year 2024-2025. And I assume that's you, Leslie. That's me. Um, so tonight I'm here to uh, present our annual review of our investment policy. Um, for those of you that are on the MGA board, you've seen this come through for the MGA already this year. So um, this is our 2024-25 draft investment policy. There are no um, significant changes over the prior year. Um, we are required by law to bring this uh, to the board for review annually. We pull up the California Debt and Advisory um, Commission, Investment Advisory Commission um, guidelines that they publish annually. And we look through it to see what has changed uh, what, if any, changes impact the district that we may need to include in our revised investment policy? And as I said, there weren't any that we needed to include this year. So this is just the investment policy as, as it's been presented in years past. Thank you, Leslie. Uh, public comment? Seeing none. Any comments or questions by directors? Yeah, I have a quick question and comment. Um, so it seems to me that the policy, um, uh, 1.0 policy, it, um, would be really helpful to reflect our, um, like commitment to environmentally responsible and sustainable, uh, investment opportunities. I did a little research and there's a lot of local agencies, water agencies that have that written into their policies, such as East Bay Mud, uh, Santa Clara Valley Water. Um, San Francisco Public Utility, and Los Angeles Department of Water. So those agencies have adopted policies that actually emphasize ethical financial investments and environmental sustainability. I would be very much in favor of um, like thinking about that for, for our district, too. I think that's a good point. I mean, I do that for myself, so... <laughs> so any comment on that, Leslie? We can certainly include it. I, do you want me to bring back a revised investment policy for this year or include it in future policy years? Um, Make sure what, Jennifer, you want to see it this year? I, I'd really like to see it this year because NOAA and other big um, agencies are, you know, predicting that this is the entry of a big drought. And I think it would be very smart for us to start it now. And I hate to delay that, but I'd love to, to have it now. Is there any issue with um, bringing it back? No, not at all. Okay. So in that case, we'll be taking... And I guess I was just going to ask, so, you know, I guess you look at how wording would be, because it will take some discussion probably to see what kind of wording other agencies have used. I, I think it's a good idea myself, but I, and thanks for bringing that up. Um, but I, you have probably lots of resources to check. And I, I would point out, too, that some of those larger agencies invest in securities that we do not invest in. Yeah. 
So that may be where those come into play a little bit more. Yeah, I realize that we're a small agency and it might not affect us too much, but to really having it right out there in our policy, I think would be forward thinking of us at the very least. Okay, so in that case, um, take, no, we're, take no action, you're gonna come back. All right. So, I guess it's, uh, there is no 7.5. Oh, 4.5, thank you. All right, so let's circle back on 4.5 management update. Um, so you know there was a request for public comment on that. So we yes. I can, do you mind asking? Yeah, I want to, yeah, why don't we do that? Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner. Thank you for pulling this, Director Lehu. Um, on page 51 in the report, it talks about um, the city's ASR progress. And um, I just want to make that very public, that it's important that the district work with the city on the, their ASR, aquifer storage recovery work. Um, I also see that um, granite construction is approaching the district to use the West Annex property as a staging area for equipment um, associated with the Capitola overcrossing over, yeah, overcrossing work. I um, would like to ask that the district, if you are considering this, it looks like you are, that you reach out to the neighbors. This will affect them. And that's been a very vocal neighborhood in the past. And I think it would behoove the district to reach out to all of the neighboring residents in that area where the, uh, the construction traffic would be coming and going from, to and from. Also, finally, I do not see anything in the report about the status of the quail run tank in Aptos. And I would like to request a status report of that project. Thank you. I know you have a comment, Ron, or possibly about the staging, but um, it, if you wish to. Yeah, we can chime in. I know Taj has been working with the neighbors naturally, as we always do on such situations. So, so communicating with them. You, you followed the suggestion before it was made. That's correct. Okay, so they are working with neighbors. Thank you for doing that. Um, all right, so Tom. Yeah, I had a couple things. Um, first, uh-oh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on the first section on Pure Water SoCal, um, it said that feedback was provided on the um, preliminary floor, floor plans and layouts and for the education building, and I've been particularly interested in that. So I maybe an update next time on, or somehow, you know, seeing what the options are and having an, an ability for input. Um, and then on the sustainable groundwater, um, on the optimization study, um, I would also kind of like to get an update on where we are with that. And that, you know, at some point, you know, cause I know we're not done and I'm sure we'll get it when it's all done, but I just a, even a brief update about what they're finding so far um, would be great. Um, Next one is I was asking for an explanation on what this Hydro Pro solutions to do something with our AMI. So I don't, I kind of wanted information on that. Suddenly we're going to have them managing our, does our AMI is going to be, have we contracted with someone to be project manager for this? Um, Hydro, Hydro Pro solutions is the master meter oh. um, parent company. Okay. That's that's where right. we're getting our meters through. So that's for all. Nothing's the really changed structure. except for their name. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks. I'm like I never heard of them. <laughs> okay. Um, and then um, there was an update on um, under capital improvements on the country club well, and sounds like we're finishing up the well. And I just wanted just was curious on the schedule for the actual treatment plant.
That'll be contingent up on when we get the pumping equipment installed. Okay. <clears throat> so it just follows that. Yeah, we want to put it online and see if the new well still has the TCP. Oh, good point. <laughs> and we'll have to pump it for a couple months probably. Okay. To see if it'll show up. Okay. Because we want to be optimistic and think it it won't be there, but it if it is, then we'll move to the next. Is it at phase. a different depth or no? Is it similar depth to the old well? It's a little deeper. A little deeper. Yeah. So, so there's a little bit um a little bit more contribution from the lower aquifer. Okay. We'll see. Well, that, that's a great idea. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the update. I think I think that's the only questions I had. Okay. Any other directors? You want to make a anyone want Um I guess not. It's a it's a management report. Yeah, it's just informational. You don't need to approve anything. So Okay. So that brings us to item eight, closed session. Um, and any public comment on closed session? Thank you, Becky Steinbrenner, um, one of the litigants <laughs> now in, in action regarding the district. I want to, um, again, let you know that I am not enjoying the litigation, and I wish I didn't have to do it. But um, it's the only choice that anyone has to challenge an environmental project and certification. The Sierra Club made it clear to you that in co recent correspondence that the work on the bridge harmed the cliff swallows. And um, thank you for halting the work there this year. You didn't last year, but thank you for halting the work this year. I went down there, and there are no swallows, no swallow activity. Um, I'm hoping it was just the time of day. But the number of nests uh, noted by the Santa Cruz Bird Club were drastically reduced, and likely an, uh, an effect of the construction tra uh, work that was ongoing last summer without any stoppage during the breeding season. So what I want to say is that um, I would really like to see a settlement of this. I would really like to see the district hold off on injecting the water that is going to degrade the high quality waters of the, gr the groundwater that's what the report, the anti-degradation report said. That's what the Central Coast Regional Water Quality Control Board acknowledged. It will degrade the high quality water. And what I'd like to ask you to do is hold off on that until you get this water optimization report and see if it's really necessary. Couldn't you do as what the city of Santa Cruz asked you to do back in 2018 and consider water transfers? injecting potable water rather than contaminated sewage water. Thank you. I have many comments, Becky, but I'm not going to say anything because you're suing us. So um, no other public comments. And so we're going to adjourn to closed session. Don't know till after closed session. <laughs>